Where's the next Vinicius Jr.? Where's the next Rodrigo? Where is the next Endrick? These sorts of signings that Real Madrid have been doing over the last few years, for a long time really, it's kind of been ahead of the game. It's where modern clubs, elite clubs, look for signing the next superstars. Jim Ratcliffe has made it clear that he wants to sign the next Mbappe for Man United rather than going out and spending big on Mbappe. In this video, I'm going to run through this shift in transfer strategy that I genuinely think is one of the most exciting concepts when it comes to how United could be operating differently under Ineos. Look, if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe. Come on board because I'm looking forward to what should be one of the best transfer windows that we've had at this club for a long old time because of the direction and the leadership. Let's run through it. But Jim Ratcliffe has spoken in quite a bit of detail already about how he wants to move away from signing Mbappes to finding the next Mbappe. Now, if you're looking at how modern clubs operate, the multi-club model is a huge part of it. So look, it's exciting that we're getting linked to young, exciting players from Boca Juniors, Aaron Anselmino, a young 18-year-old centre-back. Is he going to be a brand new? Is he going to come in and be the new Paolo Maldini? That's not what people are saying. That's not where the excitement here is. It's more in that second line. This concept that Manchester United might be looking at signing players either from South American markets or anywhere else in the world and maybe using the multi-club model to build a sustainable strategy and concept for bringing through players. Because, look, we'd all love to be able to sign the players that Benfica signed, and they had such a great track record over the last few years, right? Truth be told, starting for Manchester United is very different to starting for Benfica. But if you look at what City have done, I don't like the multi-club model. Hands in the air, I do not like it. Red Bull have done it. City have done it here. Liverpool are going to do it. It's the only reason that Michael Edwards has come in. He said there, look, one of the biggest factors in my decision to join is the fact that we're going to, we're going to get another club. Liverpool are going to the multi-club model. Ineos have the multi-club model. We've got Manchester United now. We've got Nice, Lausanne, and also Abidjan from Ivory Coast. Didn't actually know about that one. But this multi-club model, this concept that Manchester United might go out, sign a player who they then loan out to Nice, see him develop to then come into Manchester United, a far more developed player, is a really exciting one. As I said, look, Jim Ratcliffe has made it clear that he doesn't want to go out and spend big. Man United have been crap at trying to replicate the Galactico strategy. It didn't work. never worked. Our best signings have been the likes of Rooney, Ronaldo, Vidic, Evra, maybe even go park, spotting players, bringing in talents and seeing them grow at the club. That, if you want to talk about club identity, that's the sort of signing that Man United should be making. Now, that's where sort of Anselino comes into this equation. Reports suggesting that Man United are heavily scouting him and are interested in making a move for him. $20 million release clause. But 18, is he going to be ready to come into the first team? Maybe not. Not quite, not quite yet. So there's a concept here that Anselino could be signed by Manchester United and maybe, hypothetically here of course, Man United signed Tadebo this summer. He comes from Nice. They need a new centre-back. Who can possibly go in to replace him? Maybe Anselino then goes to Nice for a year or two, develops brilliantly there. They've got a great signing, but Nice is, no offence to Nice, it's not the end point. It's not the end game. I don't want to use the phrase stepping stone, but it's just... It, that's, that's kind of what it would be. At that point in his career, that's where he, that's his level. But then he develops there and then maybe follows Tadebo to Manchester United. And we create a, a pathway to sign these players. First of all, it's good to see us actually operating towards South American markets again. But then you're looking at Francesco Camada, who has an outrageous goal scoring record when it comes to youth team level, by the way. But Camada is a 16 year old who plays for Milan. Hasn't signed a professional contract yet, can't until he's 17, of course. I think there's friction between Ibrahimovic and his family, entourage, whatever it is, whatever the stories are. It's not to suggest that he's going to come in and be our new goal-scoring sensation, our new Endrick, our new Rodrigo. But these are the sorts of things that... This is why you need a sporting director, because not only do you have to think about the summer right now and the signings that we need, but you have to think two, three, sometimes four years in advance to get those players and bring them into the club before other clubs then go around and sign them. As I said, to hear and see United looking around, scouting has never been a problem in the South American market. I think the last player that we signed there was Pellistri, <clears throat> which was a good signing. But is he... Well, anyway, we don't need to speak about that. What I want to point towards here is not only a shift in strategy towards the multi-club model at Manchester United, but a shift in strategy towards 
signing some of the best youngsters in the world at a far younger age because Real Madrid, I'm going to use examples here from Real Madrid and Barcelona, Endrick, who's going to be joining Real Madrid this summer. They spent big. I think they spent about 40, 45 million euros on a 16-year-old from Brazil. Boy, is it risky. That's where you have to put your belief and your trust in your scouts. But Real Madrid are very good at it. In fact, they're the best at it. Vinicius Jr., he was signed as a 16-year-old and he's gone on to become one of the best in the world. Rodrigo was signed as a 17-year-old. Elite level players spotted by their scouts, brought into their club, not necessarily joining their club at that age, but being signed at that age and maybe being loaned back to develop a bit more to then join at the age of 18. You've seen Barcelona go for, was it Victor, Victor Roque? Again, a big amount of money signed. I think he was 18 when he was signed and he joined, I think, this summer. So actually, there's a 19-year-old. Then you look at uh, Julian Alvarez at Man City. I believe they signed him in the January transfer window. He was loaned back to a River Plate and then joined in the summer. Another a great sign. You look at what Spurs have done here. What's his name? Lucas Bergval. He actually had a few... Um, I think that's, that's one that we've uh, fluffed here. Because he came to United, I believe, on two, if not three different uh, trials. But he wasn't 18 at the time, so we couldn't sign him. We didn't have that multi-club structure like we do now that maybe we could have signed him and he could have gone to a, maybe Nice. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, the point is this, right? Manchester United, once upon a time, made fantastic unknown signings. Now, Chicharito is a, is a, is a kind of a needle in a haystack signing. When, he, when we signed him and he came in, I think we signed him and then he went to the World Cup, nailed it with Mexico, came in, booted the ball off his face against Chelsea and then, well, he was a great signing straight away. And that's not what I'm saying is, is definitely going to be happening here if Ancelino comes in. But that shift in strategy towards utilising the multi-club model is how you built, in my opinion anyway, is how Manchester United will build a sustainable transfer strategy moving forward. I do not like, I will repeat this one more time, I do not like the multi-club model. I wish it didn't exist. I think it's, from a competitive integrity perspective, I think it just gives way too much advantage to the biggest biggest of clubs. And Manchester United is one of the biggest in the world, so I should be celebrating this, really. But this is how City have operated. It's how Liverpool are going to be operating. It's how Chelsea have bought Strasbourg. It's the way that modern football has gone. Now, you can be angry about it and sit in the corner and not do anything about it. Or you can get with the times. And you can operate like it. And that it sounds like that, that concept is very exciting one to me. Tadebo coming in. Anselino, An An Anselmino, sorry. Going to Nice. Then developing there. Then coming to Manchester United. And as I said, Real Madrid, whether it's Endrick, whether it's Vinicius Jr., whether it's Rodrigo, they've shown that those players are worth it if your scouting network is proper. And you can sign those players at a younger age, see them, loan them back and see them develop. And that's what I mean. You have to think one, two, three years in advance sometimes with transfers. We've got it so wrong. But this idea that we're moving towards finding the next Mbappe, looking towards these younger signings, that's why these links I find quite exciting, whether it's uh, Anselmino there or whether it's um, Francesco Camada, the 16-year-old from Milan. I want to see more of it. And I'm. it just feels... Like the right conversations that we should be having these conversations about how United operate in the market. And if that's how, if that's the road we go down, I think we're going to have a lot more success in the transfer window than we have had over the last 10 years when we've operated a policy of spending big and a lot of the times spending on established older players whose trajectory is only going to be going downwards rather than going upwards. That shift is very exciting.